everybody. This is Kirsty from Oslo Ma Makerspace here to show you how to make a custom close cut two piece file for laser cutting and engraving in Illustrator. And uh, this is pretty much what the file is going to look like. You have the engraving part here on the right hand side and then you have the cutting part here on the left hand side. And these are going, uh, of course going to be um, added on top of each other uh, so that you have one file. To do this uh, task you will need to have access to two different um, softwares. You will need to have uh, Illustrator available and also Coral Draw and both of these softwares could be uh, can be found at Makerspace and you can use them there. So open up Illustrator um, and Coral Draw and open up a new file. And to do that, you have to click File, click New, and make sure that the um, values that are inserted into the boxes here are the same as shown here. Uh, these are also the same as you would use normally in Coral Draw uh, when you are making a new file there. And it's the same size as the bedding of the uh, or the bed, sorry, the bed of uh, our laser cutter. So 1016 for width, 711, or it says 710, but 711 uh, is fine uh, for uh, height. And then click on more settings and make sure that the raster effects down here um, says uh, 300 PPI. So that means that it's 300 PPI and res uh, resolution, which is, which is good. You click create document. And to open up your file, uh, you will have to click File, Open, and then find the file that you want to use, and you click Open again. So here today I will be using the Navigator. Um, that's because I don't have a computer mouse with me, so it's a little bit hard to move around without Navigator. Um, Navigator. Oh, Oops. Navigator can be found underneath the window roll-down menu on top. I'm going to be showing you that as well. Okay, so this one's good. But first of all, um, when you start uh, when you start up Illustrator and you've inserted your file and created a new document, everything, uh, what you want to do is to kind of um, uh, make your desktop ready. And what you will uh, need is the this toolbar here. So this here is the Essentials Classics toolbar. And if you have something else displayed here, you can just click this roll down menu uh, and hit the Essentials Classics there. Uh, also, you will need to have access to um, image trace. And although I prefer uh, when I use the, the computer mouse, I still prefer to to have the nav navigator um, uh, on my desktop. And both of these can be found underneath window, like I said. So image trace here and then navigator down there. And that's good. Uh, before we start doing anything with the file here, um, I'm just going to show you really, really quickly what kind of files um, you should be using. Um, and there are a couple that are more uh, or less um, or are easier to use than others. Um, so what you will need to be on the lookout for is files or images that have a very clear outer line um, which makes it a lot easier to make uh, the final line here in Illustrator um, look good. Okay, um, so uh, when you want to start, you just click your um, image file here. Um, and what we're going to do now is that we're going to transform this uh, regular uh, JPEG image file into a vector file. And what the vector file is, um, uh, is um, a file that consists not uh, of, <laughs> it doesn't consist of, of pixels like uh, a JPEG file does. It consists of lines and dots between those lines to um, decide the curvature on the on the line. I'm not going to explain that any any further. So if you want any more information, Google it. 
Um, but a vector file also consists of several layers often, or at least this one does here uh, that is going to be made by using the image trace. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the, that's enough explanation, I think, before we start. Um, so click your image, um, then this menu here uh, over on the right hand side, the image trace menu will light up. Uh, click the trace button here which kind of activates the, the image trace um, uh, tool. Um, and as you can see, a lot of my file now disappears, but we're gonna, gonna change that. So go over here to mode. Um, and here you have three different options. You have color, grayscale, or black and white. And to date, we're gonna be using the grayscale um, mode. You can also definitely use the the, um, the black and white, especially if you have a black or white logo, black and white logo, sorry. Um, but today, since I have uh, more colors in my original file, I would definitely like to use grayscale because if I would have converted this into a pure black and white image, um, all of the different uh, gradients within my file would disappear. And I want there to be a lot more um, distinction between the several um, shapes in my engraved file. So this is good. Also, uh, just a side note, if you have a colorized uh, picture, um, still do convert it into grayscale because uh, Coral Draw and the laser cutter does not read color. It only reads gradients in grayscale. So uh, for, it, for, for you to be able to see what the finished product is going to look like, you would definitely uh, use the grayscale. Uh, if not, you can end up with a totally different result. So use grayscale. Yes, so we've chosen grayscale here. Uh, for those of you paying close attention, you will probably see that this uh, here said threshold before and now it says grays. So this is basically just how many grays there are within the picture. And I know that there are definitely not 50 grays uh, here. There are only about five. Um, but it's fine. You can just leave it like that. It doesn't have any um, any effect on on the, the the image right now, at least. Um, if you click the advanced roll down menu here, there will appear uh, a couple new more um, options. Today we're only going to be using paths and noise. Uh, so paths are basically. Um, just how detailed the outer line of your um, of the different hmm, different items within your file is going to be. So each and every uh, one of these specks on his tummy, his eyes, his nose, and his feet and whiskers are going to be separate items, and also, like I said, separate layers. Um, so this one here, uh, sorry, this one here, the paths um, bar that uh, designs the outlook of those, um, the outer line of the of the paths. So just to show you guys, if you choose high on paths, um, if you play the uh, look on the outline, it'll get a little bit more uh, detailed. Um, if you choose low, it'll get a lot less detailed and also quite geometrical looking. Uh, so that what basically happens is that the, um, behind this file, a lot of those dots that I was talking about, they disappear. So when you choose high, you have more dots and you have more lines. And if you choose low, you have less. So today I know that we're going to be using about 65. I have been playing around with this before, so I know exactly what it's going to look like and what the different settings are going to be. Um, your file, of course, uh, will probably need different settings than mine. So make uh, make sure that you try the different settings here and the different combinations of settings also to see what you will be happy with. Uh, corners, I'm not going to use that. Just uh, shortly explain that to you. Um, this is basically what kind of angle those curves are going to be uh, in on the outer line. Uh, so if you have less corners, uh, they're going to be a lot more smoother. If you have more corners, they're going to be a lot sharper. So we're just going to leave it as is today. It doesn't have any effect. Um, but this one here, noise, 
pay close attention to my total roll. There we go. So uh, actually when you choose the noise level to a very low level to one pixel, uh, there are a lot more details that appear. And if you choose uh, high on, on noise, a lot of the details disappear, weirdly enough. But that's how it is. So play around with those a little bit. When you are satisfied, you can go ahead and click the expand button here on top. Just going to do that. Uh, this is now a vector file. It has several layers. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just to move it a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see the different layers. So we're going to start off by um, deleting some of the layers, some of the, uh, the items in this file. And the first thing that we're going to do is to delete the background because that's that's one uh, separate layer. Um, now we're going to be using this essentials toolbar here on the on the left hand side, and I'm going to switch between using the black arrow and the white arrow. Uh, so the black arrow chooses the image as a whole um, uh, or a file as a whole, and the white arrow chooses the details. So I'm just going to be clicking the white arrow marking the upper right hand corner and clicking backspace. Um, that deletes that part that I don't want. I'm going to do the same to the writing. And there we go. This is now my finished um, engraving part uh, of the file. Um, and so I'm just going to mark the entire thing and I'm going to click uh, control copy or C, sorry, and then control and V for paste. Now I have to choose the black arrow to choose my, or to move my file as a whole. Hide my navigator. Um, and based on this total row here to be sure that I get the exact same measurements uh, in height and width, the exact same ang angles and everything, I'm I have duplicated it now and I'm going to make the, the cut file out of the the duplicated um, engraving file. So uh, what I want to do is to um, first just make this file a little bit easier or s more simplistic, sorry, not easier. I'm just going to mark it with my white arrow and then I'm going to click this little button over here uh, which basically just makes every item um, change into a white fill black frame um, item yeah <laughs> uh, but I don't want there to be any fill at all I want the fill to be none so I'm just gonna go click none again and now I'm left with a lot of outer lines um, and of course when I'm gonna do the cutting of this this file I only want to be left with the outer line for my my um, total roll so the continuous outer line like this um, and if I hover over the the line now as you can see around here uh, around the whiskers uh, the um, line goes inwards instead of outwards and I don't want that in image trace uh, each time um, or image trace when when it converts the um, the JPEG file into a vector file it makes a double line around every single piece and it's really annoying um, so what you want to do is to just cl uh, click on one of the outlines that you don't want I don't want this one because it's the wrong one I'm gonna click it and then just hit backspace I'm just deleting this and if I hover over it again I can now see that it goes outwards so this is good um, I can also click and delete um, all of these separate uh, items or outline uh, outlines in here that takes a lot longer I'm just going to show you a really really short way to do this so I'm going to click it with my white arrow and then right click and choose group and then I'm just going to slide him over using the black arrow on top of my total roll because now I'm left with only one line and it's the right line and then I choose the white arrow again and I'm just gonna delete all of this that I don't want. So actually I'm, I'm done with this now. The only thing that I have to do before 
um, replacing it in my canvas is to redefine the width of this um, of this line and that you have to do over here on stroke so I'm gonna just type in 0 0.1 instead of 1 and hit enter and now my line has actually been defined as a hairline directly here in Illustrator so you don't have to do any anything in in Corel Draw um, now I'm going to place them back again and then just resize them a little bit because I don't want a total row that is this big. Whoops, I forgot to do one thing. And that is I have to mark the entire file. Let's see if I can do this. And then right click and choose group. So now when I move them, I won't be moving just one layer. I will move the entire uh, file. That's good. I'm going to hide the navigator now. Um, and then I'm just going to resize him a little bit. And this you can do resizing him uh, evenly. You can do by uh, holding down your shift button and then just dragging the, the one of the corners of the, of the image. There we go. I'm satisfied for now. I'm just going to click uh, file and then save as. <clears throat> Save him as uh, Totoro 2. Make sure that this says Illustrator and not SVG or anything else. Hit enter. Wait a little bit, a little bit, and then hit OK again. Sorry. Um, now it's ready to be imported into into Coral Draw. Uh, I'm going to show you how to open a new file here as well. Click file, new, it's pretty much the same as in, um, in Illustrator. Make sure that this here says 1016, 711 and then 300 BPI. That's good. Click OK. And now we're going to import the file. And I'm saying import because open doesn't work in a Corel Draw because uh, open only applies to other Corel Draw files. So you have to choose import. Find the file that you want to import. Click OK, no, click Import, sorry. You will get this little corner here. I'm just going to place them up in the right-hand corner. Sorry, left-hand corner. <laughs> and if I want to rescale him a little bit now, I can do that uh, a lot more easily here in, in Coral Draw. So that's pretty good. Make sure that this um, symbol here, this lock, is locked and not unlocked, such as this, um, because that means that it's going to be um, rescaled evenly. Uh, choose the the size that you or the the width or the length um, and just resize them so this is also measured in millimeters usually so you have to think with one more digit um, or add sorry not think with but add one more digit I want it to be 15 centimeters tall hit uh, or uh, write in uh, 150 click enter and there you go so it's been resized just gonna relocate him a little bit or move him around there we go that's good by me you can also just uh, move him with my arrows as well and as you can see I'm I'm um, moving the entire image uh, or the entire file not just one layer of it that's because I've grouped it earlier and then he is good to go just click file click print and insert the values that you would like to uh, depending on what kind of materials you would use so there we go. Hope that was helpful.